welcome back, my friends. Coming at you today with a little nugget of a video. As, uh, as we transition out of chapter five or level five, which was over torsion, okay? And we transition into chapter six or level six, which is on beam bending, okay? We see, we see a couple of equations here that get, get us confused on these two things over here. J, the polar moment of inertia, and I, the second area moment of inertia. Now, these are some things that we see in the torsion equation, uh, in, in the torsion chapter, rather. We saw shear stress was equal to TC over J, okay? Uh, and then we saw that uh, phi, right, the angle of twist, was equal to TL over JG, okay? Now, when we get to the beam bending chapter, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about shear moment diagrams. Uh, and then one thing that we're going to recall is we're going to recall something back from statics, and that is I, the second area moment of inertia. If, if you don't recall this from statics, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to go back right now and go back and review those videos on how to calculate I because we're fixing to do that a lot in this chapter, okay? The central equation for this chapter is called the flexure formula, and it is sigma is equal to mc over I. M is the bending moment. That comes off of the uh, shear moment diagram, which we're going to practice here on the next videos. Um, C is the distance from the neutral axis of the beam to the outside fibers, and then there's I, the second area moment of inertia, okay? Now, we remember that I, remember for, for like rectangular beams was 1 12th BH cubed, okay? But a lot of times we have a lot of round beams, especially in, in solids because we have a lot of um, electric motors driving gearboxes and just power transmission equipment, which uses round shafts. So everything here was round, and we had this geometric property of the shaft, which we called the polar moment of inertia. And if you remember the equation for that, it was this, J is equal to pi over two R to the fourth. And then we have I for round shafts, all right? And, I, and I'm constantly seeing students get an I and J backwards. And I is, for round shafts, pi over four. R to the fourth. Now you can see how easy it would be to get this confused, right? And I see students all the time saying, oh, I, I accidentally put the, the uh, divide by four there and the divide by two there and getting those backwards, right? I can't remember which one goes where. Well, I'm here to help you with a little nugget today that you will never, ever get this backwards again, okay? And here you go. This is, this is so dumb, but it works, okay? Here you go. J. How many ends does a J have? One, two, two. How many ends does an I have? One, two, three, four, four. It's so dumb that you can't get it backwards. Okay, if you hear this anywhere else by any teacher, just know that they've watched this video because it was patented here today for you so that you don't ever get this backwards again. So don't make that mistake, it's easy to remember. Just remember that little trick there. All right, good luck and I'll see you on the next video.